I'm GPB News reporter Sarah Rose with the What You Need to Know coronavirus update. Here in Georgia, we're seeing some businesses reopen while the public is urged to continue following social distancing guidelines. But that can be challenging for those who are homeless and in a vulnerable position to get sick. According to True Colors United, an organization that's focused on LGBTQ homelessness, some 40% of youth experiencing homelessness are LGBTQ. The Atlanta-based Lost and Found is trying to protect this community by providing shelter and support services. And joining us is its director, Nishida Mohammed. Nishida, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm Sarah. doing well. Um, you know, I, I, I was really compelled by the mission of Lost and Found, and I was wondering, uh, why is there a need for a center like yours that specifically helps uh, homeless LGBTQ youth? Well, because we, we, we recognize it, that uh, intentionality is important. And Lost and Found serves LGBT youth intentionally in a way that other um, organizations serving homeless youth does not. And when you think about the concept of home, you know, home is one of the, is, is for most of us, is, is a sacred kind of a place. I come home and, and it's my, my space. You know, I get to, to it, like no other space in the world, I get to be me. And organizations that are not designed intentionally for LGBT youth, no matter how well-intentioned, just can't provide that. Right. You know, I think all of us right now are sort of adjusting to a new normal under this pandemic. And I'm curious how your services in particular have been affected uh, by the coronavirus. They've been affected. We, we, we are working very hard to keep our services going um, while keeping our youth and our staff and our volunteers very you know, safe and, and, uh, and complying with all of the recommendations that are coming down from the public health authorities. And so at the house, we are on quarantine uh, folks are, uh, are going to work. Those who have jobs are, are going to work. Everybody else is asked to stay at home and, um, and, and, and shelter in place, as, as they say. And the same is going for our emergency shelter. It's usually a 30-day stay that we allow, to, allow in that emergency shelter. Uh, we are keeping those folks sheltered and in place until this crisis ends. And so the beds have been extended at this point well beyond 30 days and, and will continue to be so until this crisis is over and it's safe for our young people to go back into uh, the search for, for a home of their own. Cool. Well, one thing we're gonna do today is actually take a visit to a lost and found transition house. And one of the houseless people uh, staying there is Arglo Richardson. Hi, Arglo. Hi, Hi Arglo. Hi. So, you know, I know, I know for you and, and probably a lot of other people uh, that are sort of interacting and coming through houselessness right now, you have a story to tell and I would love to hear, hear yours and, and sort of what, what you've been through. Basically, I chose my, I prioritized my mental health and my well-being first and foremost before anything else and it gifted me homelessness essentially i stood up for myself against people who didn't accept me i decided that my my sanctuary for my own self was more important than anything else and did i know that it would risk me my house my housing situation no would i do it again yeah <laughs> i don't regret anything i did to um prioritize myself and make sure that my mental health and my sanctuary and my sanity is okay and from it found got me lost and found so that's great cool well i was wondering maybe we could uh get a tour of, of your room i'd love to see see your digs there sure yeah um right now i'm currently in the process of redoing this whole wall nice <laughs> so nice this whole thing is empty and i'm putting these two beds together and everything else is over here so oh cool Cool. Is it going to be just like one one big bed for you there? Yeah, I'm turning these two into a king so it can go against this wall. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah. You see, that's thinking. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of wall space there. You have a lot of options. So Exactly, yeah. Since we all have our own rooms now, I might as well. Yeah, yeah that's another thing that we did for the um, to protect our, our, our uh, residents there at the house is there used to be double occupancy. And so now everyone has their own room so that they can observe social distancing. Oh, cool. Well. 
cool, cool. It's like you're taking, uh, taking full advantage of it. Hey, yeah. I, I, I would too. I understand, you know, good on you. Uh, Arglo, I know you moved into the transitional house weeks before all of this craziness really uh, went into effect. And I'm curious, uh, what do you think it would be like right now if, if this hadn't have come into your life? Uh, what, what, what do you think it would be like to be houseless right now during this pandemic? Honestly and truly, I feel like everything would really suck because I, like before I lost and found, I was in my car. So for everything to be shut down, like public toilets and bathrooms and truck stops where they'd let you take showers, all that stuff is basically like on hold or closing early. It would, co it would conflict with my schedule. It would conflict with my school schedule. So I wouldn't even be able to go shower. And for me, hygiene is like, if I can't shower, or at least wash my hands. I feel some type of way. I feel angry. I feel upset. And I feel like the world is ending. So if this crisis were to happen and I wasn't in a transitional house, I don't think I would have made it. If we're being completely frank here, I don't think I would have made it. Um, with my job, I work at the hospital. You have to come in clean. You, I can't just show up there dirty and then shower and then like, you know, cause I, it just doesn't make sense. Sure. Sure. And yeah. it's, it was, it's definitely more complicated for people who are experiencing homelessness during a crisis like this. Cause I, I genuinely know that I could not survive at all. I mean, Nishida, when you hear something like that, what does, what does that mean to you? It means a lot. It means that I'm doing the right, I, I, I picked the right job. And, um, you know, one of the, the, one of the reasons this is so important to me, the work that I'm doing is because I've, I've been homeless. I've actually lived on the street for a year myself. And uh, to hear that, um, it resonates so deeply with me, thinking about like folks, folks don't think about like where you go to use the bathroom and where you go to shower, where you go to just chill and not have a thousand prying eyes, you know, staring at you. And so, that's what makes the work that we're doing at Lost and Found so important because we there are so many things that we take for granted um, as folks who have never experienced homelessness and um, that, you know, that we don't even think about how important those things are. Um, and, and it just, it feels very good to know that, that we are having the, the impact that we were founded to have, that we're, we are living in our mission as an organization. Arglo, you, uh, you shared with our producer that you're bipolar. It's actually a diagnosis that you and I both share. Um, I was curious how you've been able to sort of handle that and manage it while being inside and quarantined a, a large portion of the time. I know I'm, I'm going slowly stir crazy, so I, I'm sure it's probably relatable. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I hit stir crazy like I don't even know when my days are so muddled together now, especially because I took a little time off of work, but it's like one minute it's like, okay, I'm cool. Everything's like quarantine. I'm chill. And then I get like, I just, I can't sit down and I've redone this room at least four times. Sure. Uh, this is like my third time working on this wall. It's driving me insane. And I just try to find ways to keep myself busy. Like I've been trying to get more into art and yoga and just more productive things rather than sit there and think about everything that's wrong in my life. Right. Well, uh, you mentioned that you're getting into art. What kind of what kind of mediums are you are you really diving into right now? So I have this one. I painted it um, forever ago using different mediums and like sticky glitter stuff, like iridescent flakes. There's a bunch of different textures on this one. It feels really nice to play with, especially if I have if I have anxiety. And then this whole wall um, is actually from the dollar store. <laughs> I used water, watercolor paint um, on four different poster boards from the dollar store and like some makeup that I had. And I just made like this abstract like design. I'm not even sure like what to call it, but it's real cute, real fun with butterflies. And it just covers all the nasty stuff on the wall <laughs> that I don't want to see. So that's it for now. I only have two. Nishida, you know, I want to turn this back to you. What's the game plan going forward? You're in a unique position like a lot of other nonprofits right now as far as trying to figure out how to maintain services while this continues. What, uh, what are you going to do? Well, our, our, our clients and our services are number one priority right now. And, and so making sure that we're able to keep that house open and operating, um, 
the lights on, food in the house, and, and the same with the, the youth center, which has 12 beds there, are um, top of the, 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 the pyramid right now for priorities. Uh, that means we have to raise money. The thrift store has closed until further notice, and that um, operation brings in about 50% of what we need to operate, and it's on an ongoing basis. And so we don't have that income. And so we've just been writing grants and, and appealing to our community and our partners in the, 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 the philanthropical world. And lots of folks are coming through for Lost and Found. And, and we just ask that folks continue. It's a very difficult and precarious time right now for a lot of people, but those who are able to, to give, if you normally give in December, maybe consider an early gift so that we can keep these services uh, going and, uh, and, and keep these doors open. Well, that was Nashida Muhammad, the director of Lost and Found. We also heard from Arglo Richardson, who's in the Center's Transitional House. I want to thank you both. Uh, it's a really interesting conversation. Arglo, I wish you the best. And I hope that all the art in your room continues to flourish, and I'm excited to, to maybe check in in a little bit and see how many more paintings are, are all up on your walls. I'm sure you're going to crush it. But uh, I'm, I'm Sarah Rose of GPB, and for more coverage uh, on COVID-19, you can always visit us at gpb.org slash virus. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you.